Did you know that in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, almost 30% of children under the age of 5 are malnourished? This means that they are underweight and are not getting the amount of food that they need. The combination of decades of deadly civil war and now a new killer, the COVID-19 pandemic, have caused widespread and extensive hunger in my country. Hunger impacts school or job performance, increases the risk of diseases, and also causes death. One of my friends died because she had gotten a disease that malnourished children are prone to. It was devastating when she left and brought to my attention the real threats of hunger. From that day on, I have wanted to be a politician or someone that could really make a mark to and help children survive. Malnutrition is a significant problem facing the DRC, and for the country to advance as a nation, it needs to address this. Fewer children will then die of hunger, will be able to focus on school, and eventually get better jobs and live better quality and healthier lives. I'm 13 years old, my name is Lusamba Nagoi, and I'm one of six. I'm the second oldest, which means that I have a big responsibility in my family. Last year, my brother and I were pulled out of school because my mother needed help at home preparing food and looking after my twin baby brothers. Even though there is much less education than children across the world get, it is above average here. Girls are pulled out of school when they are 9 or 10 years old, and one of my friends was even pulled out when she was 8. My family believes education is important because it helps you get better jobs in the future, and my parents say that I will go back to school as soon as I can. My father's job is a minor, and my mother stays at home with my youngest siblings. Now that my brother is old enough to work, he too is looking for a job, but because of the COVID-19 pandemic, conditions have been worse than ever, and that extra bit of money will not make a big enough dent. Every night before I go to bed, my parents tell me stories about the history of our country, and I have gathered a lot of information over the years. The Congo before 1482 was one of the most successful civilizations in human history. It had over 3 million people and was more than 300,000 kilometers in total area. But the empire did not last forever. In 1884, many Europeans attended the Berlin Conference, which divided Africa into colonies that were under their control. One outcome of the Berlin Conference was that the Congo region was given to the Belgians. This allowed King Leopold to do whatever he thought was best, which included mass genocide or murder. After a long time, the Belgians eventually left and the DRC gained independence on June 30, 1960. Since then, the DRC has been controlled or influenced by more developed countries. Its resources have been taken away from it, and this hurts its growth as a country. The government has been unstable because of rebellions and constant turnover, and one specific leader named Joseph Mobutu killed anyone who opposed him. There has been civil war that caused my family to lose many people, including my grandfather and my grandmother's sister. Imperialism affects me and my country and has left a mark on the DRC that will be hard to get rid of. Here in the DRC, the climate is tropical. And one of the natural things that my country is famous for is for having a 2,900 mile long river that runs through it. The Congo River is the second largest river in Africa to the Nile. The river basin is huge. It almost takes up the entire country, and its tributaries form the continent's largest network of navigable waterways. We live by the river and sometimes it floods, but our house is high enough that we haven't had much trouble with it yet. One of the quotes I once heard my mother say was, life is short, but here it is even shorter. She said this after my grandfather died and was commenting on the low life expectancy here. When you are born in the DRC, you are expected to live only 61 years. This is very young, and if you compare it to a country like the US, the life expectancy there is 78 years. My grandmother is still alive. She is 65 years old. This seems young for a grandmother, but here it is normal to have children around 19 years of age. This is much younger than in a country like the USA, where it is normal to have children when you are around 29 to 30. Many newborns don't survive at birth, however. The infant mortality rate is 64.5 out of 1,000. This means that out of every 1,000 babies that are born, 64 or 65 of them don't survive. However, many children are still born to a woman. The fertility rate here is 5.77 children per woman. When you round this up, it means that an average family has 6 children in it. Compared to the countries around us, our literacy rate is pretty high. 66.5% of all women over the age of 15 can read and write, and 88.5% of men can. My entire family can read and write, and that is very lucky for here. 
Malnutrition or hunger is a big problem in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. I experience hunger at home and sometimes I have to give up my small portion of food to my younger siblings. Hunger gets overlooked in many people's eyes and we need to bring more awareness to it. People are dying and if the government doesn't address this then I am not sure what the government can do. I want to fix this problem of hunger and to do this our country has to unite. Food will lead to people getting better education and eventually getting better jobs. This will make them earn more money and eventually get more food and be able to live a better life. We need to unite to save lives, to keep our people healthy, and give everyone what they need. Everybody has to put money and time into making sure our country is fed, and for this to happen, everyone needs to help. Malnutrition is a problem that gets in the way of daily life, and if the Democratic Republic of the Congo doesn't take steps to solve it, the country will never advance. However, regardless of this, I do love my country. It is beautiful and full of natural wonders and wildlife. There are good things and bad things about the DRC, and I hope it keeps growing and developing as a country.